Hey guys, Stealth here. Today we're going to be designing a submarine from the depths. Now, submarines are a bit finicky. They are kind of difficult to build, especially considering the different control techniques that there are, because you need to try and control the depth of the thing, and that is usually where stuff gets pretty... well, pretty complicated. But fortunately, I found a better way to do it. You don't have to go foiling around or fooling around with the automated control blocks. I found a different way to do it, and let's get to work. Now, first thing that I always do, start building out of metal. Metal has a negative buoyancy, which means that it's more likely to sink. And later on, we're also going to throw in some lead blocks for additional weight and no buoyancy whatsoever. For now, let's just start by laying the bottom of the ship. For some reason... Ah, oh, never mind. There we go. Alright. Metal block. 4 meter beam. Right through my character. Now, this is not going to be a massive submarine. It's going to be a basic submarine. And this means that I'll not be putting on every possible weapon system that I can. That's not the aim here. The aim is to understand how I build these things. Why I make the decisions that I make. And how you can sp expand upon this design later on. Let's go with a couple of diagonal beams. This is going to be the outer edge of the hull. This is going to be a single hull submarine, by the way. You can, of course, take the design ideas that you're getting from this video and build your own uh, double, maybe even triple hull submarine. Which, by that time, is going to be a pretty large structure. There we go. Now, um, let's talk about propulsion. What you're going to be needing is a little bit of power, and I found that while fuel engines can do that job, there is an easier way to do it, especially if resources really aren't that much of a concern. And that is by using RTGs. I'm going to use a simple 2 meter RTG, then we're going to throw in a large battery pack, and I'm talking large, large. This is the uh, battery storage 3x3. Three three. And then finally, I want to have an electric engine, like that. It is taking some power, but it's going to take quite a while for this thing to charge up and this engine to actually start producing any decent amount of power. Alright, um, actually this RTG needs to be a bit more like that. There we go. Okay, let's seal this hull off at the edges. Uh, actually, we need to go with a diagonal slope. Sorry, I pretty much do this thing on the fly usually. There, fill up the rest of the edges here, like that. There, that's the top edge of the submarine. Now, this is the back of the sub, so it doesn't have to be particularly edgy or rounded off. Make sure that you place a propeller at the back of the ship. I'm personally going to go for a huge propeller. There, it's providing 100% force directly forwards and then just add a rudder right underneath that. There. Now we can maneuver. Well, we can maneuver, we have power, we have a propulsion system, but we don't of course have control. That's something that's going to come later. Now the beauty of this is that you don't need any kind of fuel, and that saves you so much space aboard this ship. Because now I have a very, very small propulsion block. This is providing all the energy that I need on this ship. So I'm going to be sealing off this section as a bit of a watertight area. Another watertight compartment. Then throw in some more metal beams. And finally, to top it off here, I'm going to add one water pump or an air pump. It doesn't really matter where you place it, one's enough. Next section. This is going to be where I store my ammo right at the back. So we're going to go with a couple of, uh, actually let's, yeah, a um, couple of ammo boxes. I can probably throw on an ammunition processor as well. Throw in a co another couple of ammo boxes. There. Now this thing I'm going to be building in a double hull configuration to make sure that the ammo doesn't go up the moment that this thing does take a hit. Now I found it not particularly likely for this submarine to take a hit, because I usually dive it pretty deep. But if it does happen to take a hit, then it's not likely to go up immediately. Although this top section is pretty exposed, so you could go with one less layer 
of ammunition and add yet another layer of metal there. Alright, moving on. This is going to be the control room. For the control room you're going to need a few elements. We're not going to be touching vehicle controllers. We're going to go right for the complex controller. And let's put that in the correct orientation of the ship. I'm going to be adding to the complex controller a drive maintainer. This is what we're going to be needing to control the propulsion systems. And again, one's enough. Let's turn off mirror mode. This thing means that the screw is pretty much going to behave like a normal bit of propulsion. Whereas if you set this to the complex controller, it's only going to provide thrust for so long as you keep pressing that button. I don't want that. So we're going to go back to the screw or the propeller and set that to primary. Then to the rudder, H should be red, K should be green. This means that if I press H, the rudder goes negative and we go to port. If I press K, the rudder turns positive and I go to the starboard. So now we can move around, although if we start moving around now, we're going to be eating a whole lot of water. So not quite yet. Now I want to have manual control over my weapon systems. For that I'm going to add a fire control computer. And of course you can arrange this room in any way you see fit. And then we're going to go and click this one, the PID, General Purpose, Proportional Integral Derivative Controller. It's a whole mouthful, but the main important thing is you don't particularly need to worry about it just yet. Just make sure you have two of those. That's it. All right, let's turn that into yet another airtight compartment to make sure that we can use that for trimming the ship later. There we go and you can top it off. And again you can make this thing as um, beautiful as you like. You can add a chair which is actually not a bad idea so you can actually warp to this uh, particular ship. You can add some lights, you can add uh, sensor systems, you can decide to go with the mainframe. The mainframe for me is going to be sitting in... actually never mind I'm going to put the mainframe here as well. This is going to be the control room so the mainframe should be there. Mainframe, a couple of card slots. By the time that you're watching this video, the card slot may have been changed yet again. There's quite a bit of uh, changes going on to the mainframe section and the AI section lately. General purpose. To make sure that this thing can receive and process inputs from its sensors, which are going to be coming later on. And I'm going to be renaming this thing as main. And of course, since caps lock is on, it's going to be looking a bit weird. Okay, finally, make sure we have a wireless transmitter on this thing. So if I want to, I can hand off the control for the weapon systems to the submarine. The submarine, I'm not going to allow it to be controlled by the AI itself. I'll be always be in control of this sub. That's the way that I usually like to play my subs, because they tend to behave a bit unreliable or a bit unpredictable. Moving on. Metal beams. Sealing off the control section. And make sure we have a roof on that thing. Now, this area is going to be flooded as well. Fortunately for us, we're a robot and it doesn't hurt us. It doesn't even matter if your area gets flooded or not. So now we have two compartments that can be flooded if required. We have the aft with the engine. We have the control room. Next, we're going to be building the torpedo room. This is going to be a very, very important area because it is the main weapon system of this ship. I'm not going to be attaching any kind of vertical launch systems to this ship yet. That's going to be uh, works for another video. I'm going to go with a uh, quad launch pad system here. So we're going to go with a launch pad there. And we're going to go with two more launch pads over there. Make sure you keep a little bit of room here, so you can always install some additional modules, install a missile controller, install the AI local weapons controller, and whatever other additions you would like to your missiles. Then, at the gantries, it's okay if they uh, overextend a little bit. That's the torpedo tubes. So now, we need to start working on finishing off the hull, and the hull is getting a bit shorter than the submarine, so let's fix that. Turn these around, add the hull of the submarine, 
That thing is out of position. There we go. Top section of the ship. And actually I'm going to cut them off right there. We can always extend these a little bit more. Now to make the bow of the sub, I'm going to go for triangle corners. These are going to come on here. So you have something that looks like it has teeth. It's not exactly what it's supposed to look like, but you can always make use of slopes and start making this thing more of a, uh, let's say an aerodynamic or hydrodynamic hull. Then we can extend the torpedo tubes a bit more. Now these are some very, very long torpedo tubes at this stage. I mean, the amount of um, slots for additional modules that you have here is getting a bit extreme. But, of course, you can um, make that as small or as large as you see fit. Now, important is that you seal off the torpedo area. This is critical, because once you've done that, you're going to place down yet another air pump. And this air pump will control the torpedo section. Because while it may look like water can enter through this torpedo tube, it's not actually the case. As the game is saying, there is a volume in this area, or in this room, and it is not breached. Even if I put the ship in the water now, so let's make a big splash, there we go. You'll see that the sub more or less floats. It's because we still have all those air pumps. It's floating pretty neatly, although the back seems to be slightly heavier than the bow. So it's time to balance this thing out. Make sure that it's pretty much even. Let's add a lead block over in the bow. Now we're getting there. Stern is still too heavy. Let's add some more. There's no really clear rule for this. You just got to make sure that the thing looks like the top end is pretty much equal to the waterline. And considering there's a bit of swell from the waves, I'd say it looks good this way. Taking it back out of the water, time to add some controls. And this way we're going to be using the hydrofoils. Very, very important. Make sure the hydrofoils for the stern of the ship are pointing backwards. Yes, that's right, backwards. Once you have those, make sure you have mirror mode on. Otherwise, the ship is going to be behaving very, very unreliably, and it's going to start spinning like a corkscrew. You don't want that. It's going to look really silly on your sub. Then, you add some more to the bow. Make sure that these are oriented forward. Again, very important. Next up, time to make sure that the AI can actually see something. So I'm going to extend this hull a bit more. And I'm going to be adding some connectors. The bow connector is going to be used for a passive sonar. You can go active, but I prefer passive in order to keep my sub hidden. I don't want to be broadcasting my position. This is usually how I build my subs. You can go with active sensors, you can go with an active sonar, but submarines and surface ships that have a passive sonar can actually detect this uh, beacon. So make sure you're going to be a bit careful with that. You can always add a wireless snooper, very, very useful, because this thing will also allow you to be a passive sensor. The thing is, if I place it directly behind this one, the passive sonar says I can no longer look to the back of the ship, and that's fine. We're going to be adding a few more. Moving on, you can also add a retro reflection sensor. Again, it's a passive system. And this passive system will make sure that you don't send out anything that you don't want to be sending out. You can go with passive radar. The passive radar unfortunately does not work submerged. So that means that you're going to have to be using a submarine on the surface. Which kind of goes against all of my design decisions so far. So I'm not going to be using that one. For now I'm going to be leaving one slot open in case I want to add another sonar or another sensor later. Now make sure that this thing looks nice and hydrodynamic. So I'm going to be using a uh, downwards triangle. There we go. Add another downward angled slope. And again, one like that. And a downward slope here. There we go. Make sure you have a wireless receiver on this thing. Otherwise it will not be able to send those signals to the sub 
which is bad news, or to the mainframe. I'm going to be doing the same thing on the stern. It's just going to be a bit smaller because I only want to have a passive sonar on there. One connector block will do, one receiver block, and finally one passive sonar block. Again, make sure it looks nice. Um, I think that, once again, the triangle corners will look quite nice on this thing. One there, one there. Automatically mirrored. Downward slopes. There. Now these things are sticking out slightly. And you can see that this thing is saying, hey, my line of sight forward, that way, is blocked. That's right, he's looking at these sensors. That's okay. This one is able to look forward and port and starboard. This thing is going to be looking everywhere except forward. So this thing is going to be looking towards the rear of the ship. And that's all I need as far as sensors go. Now, it's time to get this thing into the water and get her moving. So I'm going to exit build mode. I'm going to jump to the chair of the ship. And here I am, right in my control center. The submarine currently floats, and that's because we have all of that air which is currently trapped inside the sub. Let's first make sure that the rudder actually, or that the propulsion actually works. If I press U at the moment, or J, which is usually the control keys for the propulsion, you can see that it doesn't quite work yet. That's because there is no um, specific controller that's being told what it needs to do with that block. For that, you need to adjust the drive maintainer. And the drive maintainer controls the primary drive. That's why you set the main propeller to primary earlier. And then you click the uh, controls that you want to have your ship to uh, be able to move forwards and backwards. For me, that's U and J. That's all that I need here. Let's test if that works. Propeller starting up. Let's see if the rudder works. This is H that I'm pressing right now. And finally, K. I don't mind if my submarine rolls a bit. I think it actually looks the part. A submarine does roll a little bit when it's turning. Now, it's a submarine. Let's make it dive. Let's make sure that the sub is moving at pretty much no speed at all. Unfortunately, the T and G key combined doesn't work on this. You're going to have to manually slow down the propeller until it's no longer moving. This is when we're going to be using those PIDs to start controlling the behavior of the sub. I always start it with the right one. It doesn't really matter which you use for which. We're going to start at the bottom, task selection. The bottom section determines what this job is, what the job of this block is. And what you're basically looking at is a miniature computer that's going to be controlling the hydrofoil altitudes, or actually the pitch. Because the pitch means that the submarine is not going to be going in extreme angles. It's going to be using the pitch using, or it's going to be controlling the hydrofoils to achieve a pitch angle. There we go. Controls oil hydrofoils at once to achieve a pitch angle for the vehicle. Hydrofoils at the back of the vehicle should be placed facing backwards. Check. That's what we already did. It's already facing backwards. Now, because these are hydrofoils, they're not going to be working particularly well once we're stationary. Once they start moving, it's going to be trying to do its best to keep the ship as level as possible using the hydrofoils. You can see that the roll of the ship suddenly is getting a lot less, because there's water flowing over the hydrofoils or over the dive planes, and this is allowing the sub using, or actually allowing the computer, using the PID to control the role of the sub. And you can mess around with this a bit more. I would recommend keeping the integral time low. The integral time says that this is the amount of time that the computer has to actually make sure that the uh, pitch is no longer a problem. If you put this too high, it's going to take 115 seconds for the ship to start leveling out. And I usually keep this very, very low. Three seconds is good to make sure that it doesn't take the computer that long to balance out the sub, using the dive planes, that is. TD derivative time means that um, you get a larger prediction time. Now, I'm not going to be going too deep into this. You can basically keep this thing at the base settings. The test stim 1 is the value that you want it to have. If I want this thing to start pitching forward, 
you can start adjusting this. There, if I make the pitch 24, and I set the test to have test stimulus 1, basically use feature 1, and I put it to 40, watch what happens. The submarine is going to try and pitch up at 40 degrees. Now it looks like some sort of weird flying fish, so I'm merely going to turn this thing back off. If I put it down to minus 31, the step is going to be pitching down. Now it's going to behave really, really unpredictably. And um, considering that my propeller is at the back of the ship, I'm not really going to be doing anything like this. So make sure you keep this thing at zero. We don't want to have any kind of pitch. Next up is the other end, the other computer or the other controller. This thing is actually going to be controlling the altitude of the submarine or the depth control. For that, make sure you go to task selection, air pump, altitude or al air pump alt. Use air pumps to achieve a set point altitude. Use the test stimuli to request a value other than zero. Which means that currently the submarine or the computer is trying to keep the sub at zero altitude. So at pure water level. I don't want it to do that. I want it to be diving. But first we have to look at this thing, the integral time. I don't want my sub to dive in three seconds. That is not particularly likely with it trying to balance out the ship using all of those air pumps that we built. So I usually set this thing to have a value of 30. Now derivative time is allowing the computer to have a bit more prediction. The PID controller we use the derivative time to predict how large the error will be, which is the error between what you want your depth to be and what your depth actually is. I want this thing to be able to predict a bit further. So um, if it can look farther into the future by setting this thing to, for example, 5, this thing is going to look 5 seconds into the future and go, hey, am I at the correct depth? If no, start adjusting. Finally, you can keep the gain at point 0 or 0 0.01. That's good enough. Now, set test stimulus to test stimulus 1. And let's make sure that we put this at, let's say, minus 50. And here we go. We're submerging. Now, the dive planes that we set earlier, or the hydrofoils, are keeping the ship perfectly level. We're slowly going down. Altitude is minus 9, minus 10, minus 11. And what is happening right now is that the computer is controlling all of these air pumps. They're currently switched off because the sub is trying to float, uh, it's trying to flood all of those uh, floodable bays. And the next step is for it to reach 50 meters below surface, or an altitude of minus 50, at which point it's going to level out. So let's just have this thing dive. In the meanwhile, I'm going to be setting up the torpedoes, uh, these huge torpedoes. Let's add a couple of sets on the fins of the back. Two torpedo thrusters or torpedo propellers, one fuel tank. I always add a regulator because these things can actually, let's make it two fuel tanks. This thing has torpedoes that are so large that they can go for miles and miles. Regulator, keep it alive for another 180 extra seconds. Add a ballast tank to keep this thing submerged. I always want to try and hit below the waterline of any kind of enemy target. And for a torpedo, I usually use explosive warheads. You can also go with EMP warheads if you want to be doing a bit of damage to the weapons controllers. And finally, add a torpedo sonar. I'm going to be replacing one torpedo sonar with a one turn so that I can actually fire behind the sub. This is what's known as a throw over the shoulder where the torpedo fires a torpedo, torpedo turns around, bypasses the sub and hits something behind the submarine. I want this set up for all my torpedoes so switch that out, and there we go. Altitude is currently still going down. Minus 56, minus 57, minus 58. I set this thing to dive to 50. So what I need to do is up the gain a little bit to make sure that the submarine understands that it's not quite behaving the right way. Now, to be perfectly honest, I haven't exactly figured this out yet. It seems to be, at least for me, a bit of trial and error. And... Um, Let's put this thing at 20 to make sure the sub has 20 seconds to start predicting 
or to start um, adjusting the value that it needs to be in. You can see we're still going down. Let's try to level this thing out. Put it to 0.5. Submarine is now coming back up. Minus 70, minus 69, 68, 67, 65. I've got to say, this sub is currently running quite fast for a submarine. So let's slow her down a bit. You don't need all of this power, all of this speed. 5 meters per second is perfect. Current depth, minus 51. And at this point, the sub should start leveling out. And there we go. It's currently at minus 49. It's going to be holding around minus 49, minus 50. And that's it. That's how I built the subs. Now what you see other videos doing, and that's why I haven't done it before, is you need to be able to use advanced or automated control blocks which are trying to set the depth using the hydrofoils, which you can do, but the hydrofoils are for me here to manually or to actually stabilize the sub. They're not actually here to try and take control of the depth if you do that, the submarine is going to have to maneuver at all times. It's going to have to move. And I, for one, can basically turn off the pr uh, propulsion systems, which will cause the sub to start maneuvering a bit unpredictably. And again, you can add additional spinner blocks on the sub itself or in the inside. So I only really need the hydrofoils for this thing to float stably. But other than that, I don't really need it for anything else. Now, as a final test, let's hand over control to the weapon systems. So I have selected a different slot, and you can see that once I'm actually starting to back, get back up to speed, the sub tries to level out again. It tries to get a negative or um, uh, a neutral pitch of minus nothing or plus nothing, a pitch of zero using the hydrofoils. Weapon control has been handed off to the local weapons controller, which I'm going to be using to uh, fire at a marauder. Marauder has been spawned in. There it is. Torpedoes are currently steady. I don't think we're detecting it yet. No, I'm not tracking any targets. So we're going to have to get a bit closer. So, let's speed up. While we're speeding up, one more thing to make your life a whole lot easier. Go to the computer that you're using for depth control. Go to complex, and then set the buttons that you want to have this thing go up and down. I, by habit, use O and L. So that if I press O, whoops, let's close this thing off. If I press O, it's going to make the desired depth less. Minus 48, minus 46. If I press L, it's going to continue to dive. Minus 60, minus 62. Perfect. So now all I need to do is sit in my chair, use U and J to determine the speed, H and K to determine the bearing that I want, and use O and L to determine the depth that I want. And that's it. That's all I have to do on this ship. Let's see if the sub is actually tracking it yet. No, passive sonar still does not have the desired range. Let's have a look at the detection range. This is visible. This is radar range, which I don't have. Sonar range. I only have passive sonar, so it probably won't show up. Snooper range. I do have a snooper on this thing, so the target must be further away than 1092. And where is the target? target is closing. You know what? Let's adjust this sensor. I'm going to go with an, uh, an active sen sonar instead, which should be able to pick up the ship pretty soon. There we go. Currently tracking Marauder with a detection chance of 20, 40 degree, 40%. 40 so the chance of me getting detected are increasing, which is bad. I don't want to get detected, if I can at all help it. Oh, damn it. The reason that it's not firing is that I don't have any kind of controller set up. 
I don't have any kind of AI set up here. That is really foolish. Uh, before I do so, let's make sure I an IFF, or Identification Friendly Foe. I don't want to get shot up by my own torpedoes. That would be a really bad day. Wireless receiver. Torpedoes away. Let's slow the sub down a bit. And let's follow the torpedoes. See how much damage they do. They're currently all fired at the same time. You can, of course, build in another stagger add-on to make sure that the torpedoes have um, as much time between them as you like. Now, it seems that this thing is actually able to detect me because I have an active sonar. Torpedoes going in. This is going to leave a hell of a mark on this hull. Boom! 100,000 damage, or 100k. That main gun is just gone. It's no longer there. Let's fire again. Torpedoes away. They are hopefully turning fast enough to get a hit on this ship. Although I doubt it. I'm too close to the target. This is why for a submarine you can, if you want to, set up a minimum engagement range. If you have torpedoes that are this size and you don't have enough fins, they're going to take a while to turn. So make sure that you have a way of doing that. Now you can see that I am getting shot at, although it's not actually doing any kind of damage. I do however feel not too safe here, so I'm going to press L. Set the desired depth to go quite a bit lower, and you can see the sub is already going down further. Desired depth is now minus 94, and by doing it this way, the submarine will continue to dive until it hits 94 degrees, or 94 minus, and that's where it's going to hold. So, that is my, let's say, beginner's submarine tutorial. I'm going to be building a bigger submarine later, which has uh, radar buoys to, to actually get a faster detection on surface threats, as well as anti-air missiles and long-range cruise missiles. For now, I hope that this video has helped you build a submarine. These things tend to be a bit finicky, especially if you use the automated control blocks, but by doing it in uh, this particular fashion, I found that it actually makes your life a whole lot easier by using those PIDs. So, thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please give the video a like so I know that was useful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. And otherwise, good luck building your submarine and uh, let me know what you've come up with. Thanks for watching. See you soon for the next video.